Saul board the airplane with him, fasten our belts, sit back, relax, and enjoy our trip from dawn to dusk in African savanna. Over to you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Manju Mohan, sir, for such a nice introduction. And uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Satish and YPS uh, team for making me the part of this Wildlife Week celebration and giving opportunity to interact and uh, share some of my nature journey, what I call as a journey of joy with YPS members and uh, fellow photographers. So when I was invited uh, to give it a talk, I was wondering uh, what should be the structure of the talk. And uh, because wildlife photography over the year, uh, in, and even in the India, it has been like a vast field now. And uh, we have many genre like macro, landscape, bird photography. So, and uh, within an hour of time, I wanted to be a, like no, a meaningful discussion where the viewer and especially the budding photographers or the young photographers who are listening to our uh, talk take something out of it. So then I thought, why don't I uh, do a virtual African safari? Because in this COVID era, most of the things we are doing in virtual environment only. Like today's our this Wildlife Week celebration, also we are doing online virtual mode and. Uh, an African safari is like always a wish list of uh, most of the wildlife photographers because abundance of wildlife and uh, open savanna of Kenya provide excellent opportunity to on your photography scale. So today I will take you uh, like a day trip, uh, how we do in a, when we are in Masai Mara or in some part of the Kenya. and. We'll use some tools and give some detail about how technique I use. So it is not about I'm just showing you some photographs uh, which I have taken, but I will take you through a process that how we start our day and how we use a um, first light and then how gradually as the day progress and how uh, as the light changes, what kind of images we can make and how we can make most of most of the most use of the light what is available to us and uh, there might be some something which you most uh, some of you might not be comfortable or some of you might not be doing it uh, because i might be doing something which not unusual or something something different as uh, manju sir told i always try to divide my time uh, in the field between doing the regular stuff which uh, which we expect to do when you are in a photography tour. And then I want to divide some of my time to do something, something in a sense, give some thought, give some, uh, give some, some experiment, some try out something. If it works, it's good. If it doesn't work, it's good. We don't do something uh, standard, like, no? You got the point what I'm saying. So some of the ideas which I do in the field, whether it is a changing different perspective or using different type of angles and all that thing. And uh, why I choose the light as a as a axis of today's talk? Because when we talk about photography in a general, we say that photography is just the capture of light. That is a technical definition what we say. No? So depend on uh, what kind of light, quality, quantity, direction, color of the light, the mood of the image will be decided, isn't it? So before I take you onto the safari, I will just uh, share uh, my PDF screen and uh, then we uh, continue. I just give you some example that which I did in India and how a simple change in light can suddenly change the mood of the image. So we'll get the context that what today I'm going to talk. Okay, so give, give me a couple of seconds. I just share my screen. Uh, so is it screen is on can somebody technically can tell me technical guys yeah i think it's on let's let me put it into the full view i think it is full view also is it yes okay thank you srinath for updating so uh as i was saying that uh, before we uh, move ahead i would like to uh, give you some 
example that how a light actually may uh, sets the mood. So now this is a, a photograph of uh, Tekken branded gecko and uh, Amboli, those who go for macro photography. No? This is one of the sort out of endemic to Western Ghat. A beautiful gecko. You see the pattern on his skin. So this is one of the image uh, which I wanted to capture. And honestly, I tell you, when I went on this uh, photography tour, this is what something I had in mind that, OK, a beautiful gecko and and that they use their tongue to clean the eye because uh, they don't have eyelids. So they use their uh, tongue to wipe the or keep the eyes clean. So I was very happy with this photograph and I was lying on the flat on the ground and must be shooting with 100 mm macro and the flash was on. So when I took this photograph and then you can see that the this uh, water droplets are there. So I was uh, seeing through the viewfinder that how the image came, no? sharpness and all that thing. So those droplets were very uh, in, were nicely visible no? because they have a the screen is the water repellent screen, so the water droplets will be. The rain has just stopped, uh, just few minutes back, and uh, so because I know beforehand, being in a nature, we have very few nature elements like water, like the sun, dust. All are like our our friends when we do photography. As and when we get an opportunity, and if we can add these element into our photo with the subject, the photos will enhance. The value of the photo will go up. So because I know uh, what the water can do if you use a backlight. So then I just shifted the uh, torch uh, to the other side of the subject and uh, around 45 degree of the camera and put a backlight. Now you see those subject is same. I'm also at the same place, same equipment. And we have just changed the direction of the light. Now the flash is not there. And instead of flash, I'm using a a torch light the torch beam is coming and falling on a subject and now if you see closely the the all those water droplets which are on the on the gecko are glittering isn't it the simple uh, change of light direction completely change the mood of the picture now if you see both the picture individually uh, they are a complete picture on its own nothing is good nothing is bad or this is better or this is not good or like that what I mean to say is, if you know how a light can change the feel of your image accordingly, you can do. If you want a nature history, from point of view, you want to create an image, the first image is good. If you say that photography is an art and you want to be a little more creative in some way where you, know, you want to sh not show obvious. You know? Obvious means which people expect. The first picture which expect. The second picture you created where your photographer's thought process went into the frame and then you came up with the second photographs. So that is how the light make difference. I'll give you another example also. Uh, this is again the wrinkle frog, uh, endemic to Western Ghat, uh, my wrinkle frog, same Amboli area. Again, when I went uh, in the night walk, my idea was to, the male was guarding the nest and uh, this is the picture on the right was what I was looking. So. When I got this photograph, it has a complete picture. That's how they breed. The, the tadpoles will fall into the stream which is flowing under it. Under it. But after getting this picture, I was seeing that there's a the, because the flashlight has, I have no control on the flashlight. It will fall here and there also other than the leaves. So you can see there are a lot of tweaks also has been illuminated by the flashlight. Then again, because tripod was already set and the sub camera was already focused, I was using some, I think, 2470. So again, what I call a concept called work on your base image. Once you have some image, you did something, and then you, instead of winding up, you give it a thought. Ki, is it there any scope of improvement is there? Is something I can add, or some element can be added, or something can be removed, or the light source can be changed here and there, and then can effect can be different. So again, the light went at the back side. Now the image in the second also convey the same message, but it is in more little artistic way. My uh, The viewer eyes will be only focused on the leaf and the message is there. The frog is guarding the eggs and the eggs are visible, but there's no distraction around it. Those twigs which was glowing because the torch light I can control. I can control how much uh, the beam should be there and how where the spell 
should be there. So that is how a same subject again, same place, camera is exactly at the same place, no changes, only the direction of light completely change the mood of the image. You're getting where I'm taking you. So the direction of light, because we are discussing direction, so light, so that's what I'm just focusing on the light, but there are many things which can affect the image overall. But we should not rush that, okay, this is over and then we move on to the second image or other subject. We should sit there, give it a thought, think over it. And that is where I want to say, build on your base image. Once you have something and then try to work over it. Another example, Tal Chopper. I was there for a few days and these black bugs are always fighting there, mostly during the breeding season. Now, though both picture has a same concept. Both are, uh, I'm using 500 mm sitting on a beside my car on the ground and uh, one is early morning uh, see the treatment of the image where the dust is been blown by the we know that the dust and anything uh, smoke everything if the backlight comes it will glow so both pictures are <sighs> complete on their own but the direction of light one is the front light and one is the backlight makes a huge difference in the image Got it. So that is how the light can change the mood of your image. So now I take you to the Africa and uh, so let's see how we can create, how we can use the light there and uh, how what all possibilities are there. So uh, today when I was, uh, I have taken uh, uh, Africa safari as a reference, but it can be in India safari also. It can be like anything. But why I have taken this because the it is like a dream destination, and I know many of the young photographers or budding photographers who are watching this uh, thing. They have a everybody has a desire to go to Africa because of abundance of wildlife what we have there and uh, and the uh, and the opportunity means uh, <laughs> too much actually. You can shoot whole day. People say that I shot 500 GB. I shot this much during a course of week or something like that. So opportunity is there that really you can, you can, uh, you can experiment something you bring and you can like those ideas you had photography ideas, but you never able to execute them. There is a, so you can really honor hone your photography skill when you are in Africa trip because of the sheer number of species, varieties and numbers of animals and the opportunities that is provided. So now when I start our uh, safari, uh, we are very, very, very early morning. Very early morning means around five o'clock, dark night. We know where we are heading, the, the previous night information or the uh, where we have left something, either it is a cheetah family or the lion family, but we leave very early because <clears throat> with a packed breakfast, just have a cup of coffee. And one of my most favorite technique is to create unique and compelling wildlife imaginary is backlighting. I love backlight. And why I love backlight? <laughs> because uh, in 2011, when first time, uh, I think 2011, when we went first time, and uh, I was with uh, Dr. Ish and uh, another a good friend, Anuji. And uh, Anuji introduced to me, uh, we were on a river crossing and when this migration happened and the river crossing uh, possibilities are there, then we really have to wait some time for hours, like three, four hours, five, six hours, the buildup will happen, they will not cross. And so we were waiting there and then there was uh, a legendary photographer, Shri Anup Shah was there. He he he's he's like permanent there. Nobody have shot African wildlife uh, more than him. So he is iconic. And many people doesn't know because he's not on social media, so they don't get updated what he's doing. But he is the one like author of twelve plus books, winner of Nature History Museum BBC Award like more than fourteen times. Nobody is close to him. Amazing photographer, Sambal down to earth, Indian origin. So. He welcomed us, Bachit Kia, introduced by Anuji, that friend of mine. After talking something, sometime, uh, 
he understood that he is not a touristy person hai na so he is unko samajh aa gaya ki bhai serious type bande hain so i asked him sir ki first time africa hai what what should be uh, your guidance and what should be the like uh, a good tip for us to unhone bola yashpal the best light is back light then quarter then half and then the front light so matlab 2011 mein usse pehle mere liye best light was the front light so subah subah first thing what we used to do the light should come from behind our shoulder and should fall on the subject and you no know, subject should be nicely lit kind of thing so it took a time to observe that ki back light is the best light sometime back light se kuch kiya karke theek hai but us time we were growing we were learning photography so but the legend has said so i took it very seriously and i start from the next day i started working on the back light so the first thing what i do is then then the results start coming the and the results start showing off so that is now my set pattern first to to end of hours i will do the back light now when you are seeing uh, some of the pictures which i'm showing on the side so when the i started getting result the backlight is basically backlight means the uh, light source is behind the subject means subject is between the light source and the photographer the light source in nature photography obviously will be the sun so the the when uh, when if you use correctly the backlight photographs draw attention to the form and you see these giraffe pictures everybody everybody knows how giraffe looks sabko pata hai no everybody from nursery book we know how the giraffe looks or the picture of that just i shown you the elephant picture everybody knows how africa looks african elephant appears how they looks so zaruri nahi ki we have to show them properly well lit but see that mood of the image isn't it so the form the shape of the subject the warm inviting tone of the morning natural light will add contrast and vibrancy in your image isn't it you will feel more connected so backlight backlight can be used in two way if the light is really strong we can use to create a nice rim light around the subject depend upon subject or otherwise we can use to create silhouette so first we take the rim light how we rim light can be created and what we have to look when we have to create the rim lights and little later at the evening when the dusk time will come we will look for the silhouette okay so now this is a, a cheetah uh, very famous cheetah malaika and uh, you see the light is falling and the nice rim light kind of effect is created around the uh, subject body isn't it and uh, there is no the, the subject is not properly exposed how it should be technically but you can make out this is cheetah and is well lit so when you are doing this kind of photography our idea is not to get a correct exposure see jo camera auto me karta hai waisa wala nahi not that correct what as a photographer you want our objective is that 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 light the rim light which is around the subject should not be should not burn so we have to if you do spot metering take a metering from the that glowing part of the hair or from the sky which is almost similar lit and do your exposure lock and focus will be always on the subject because subject is what we want to focus or if you don't know spot metering and it's little complicated start with minus full minus one stop and then you see how the effect is see the histogram if it is not touching to the right or something like that accordingly you can compensate plus minus and try to get it so normally we say that we have to go low when we are doing silhouettes or something na ground level but this you try to keep a little darker background darker means a ground as a background instead of a sky i just give you another picture you will get the idea see the mood here the lioness is walking in the morning light sun is you can see where the sun is there from the light is coming on the top left corner and the nice hollow effect around the lioness and all the grass blades are glowing so you have a some very you know interesting image and this male lion 
just early morning we got him uh, because if you don't give them them early then you get them but they will mostly sleeping so that is wow see nice the mane is glowing you know the the beard under the chin is glowing and when you if you take a proper rim light effect i will tell you how in post processing you can image further enhance it and you can really create amazing creative stuff huh? so so when we are doing uh, now this cheetah was on the mount so if you see closely observe it the uh, go hollow effect is coming till ears and after that it is disappeared the reason is the background is getting brighter as you moving up behind the subject you see the uh, the sub background is brighter the effect will be there but it is getting merged with the sky so what what we have to do we have to shoot little now like same this this is a young male lion you can see the nice glowing effect here but the head is above the horizon so there you will not see the effect if monsters are watching it then we were together in different vehicle we were shooting this i think 3 4 years back so you can see that effect is there so idea is that we have to keep subject within the horizon line and again he is doing some uh, marking and you can see that dust is glowing in the backlight so that is how the backlight can be created now again it will depend on subject also now this rhino is again the nice setting the early morning nice atmosphere isn't it but because the subject doesn't have a hair coat around it so it will not glow if you see the only little bit on the ear the hairs are there so choice of subject is there elephant will not glow or the most of the cats will glow their hair they have nice hair around their body that will glow or the elephant will not glow the first picture you have seen it but the knowledge of subject is important and the technique is important so we have to shoot to the ground standing on the vehicle on the vehicle and start with minus 1 minus 2 and then you can create some nice uh, so subject is important and the technique is important now see this line is again uh, it is on the same concept where uh, uh, i did this uh, rim light kind of thing and now i created into backlight and played with highlight and shadow and then that rim light concept start creating some interesting picture interesting in a sense that is different different than what obvious people will expect a lioness to look like so i will just try to show you that it is not that complicated in lightroom or in post processing to convert that uh, into such kind of images so it doesn't look like that bahut photoshop kiya hoga kala kar diya type na it's not that complicated and uh, so just let me see uh, if i can just uh, able to move into lightroom for a second and uh, is if i am able to do it okay great so i think just somebody can just shrinath can you confirm lightroom is there okay so lightroom is visible so this is the picture and i just reset it okay so we we reset it okay now i have to reset here okay so we reset it this is how I, we have photographed it what is this okay and this is the same line is we have photograph couple of minute here and there now in this the background is same that we have a darker background but the light was coming from the left side so it is not falling on the face and in this the light is falling onto the face so what i am doing is i am just converting into black and white a basic uh, uh, post processing i have just wanted to show that we can work further onto this kind of images and i just made black minus 100 and then i reduce the exposure also i reduce it fully minus 5 so screen is black now i just start adding exposure minus 3 minus 2. you can stop wherever you feel as a photographer all these are subjective but my test can be it can be different for you so suppose now i am here and somewhere here suppose minus 2 and half this is what now i just push highlights little bit so that the rim light can be little little prominent and again i push exposure little low so now those who know wildlife 
they can easily make out that this is Linus. There is no big thing, na. But it has been presented in a little creative way. Creative way that at least the viewer will have a two five seconds. He will stop on if you post on Instagram. He will just not swipe it. He will have to have a look closer look how it has been created. So that's how you can create. Uh, if you have a, a source image with you, then the post processing another twenty. I suppose there would have been another highlight here and there. You could have used one to dodge little bit, and you could have get rid of those high highlights, and you could have created a beautiful creative image kind of thing, isn't it? So I just go back to our uh, uh, PPT, and uh, let me go full screen control. Okay, so we are back to our. Uh, presentation so this is how the loinesses can be created now for me i would like to show a uh, loinesses portrait like this rather than uh, i should have shown the other photograph that would have not come like that because there was no rim line rim light effect so by if you don't have a source file where you can work then you will not able to create so pehle basic field mein jo kaam karna hai what you have to work in the field you should do and then in post processing obviously 20 30% enhancement can be done so we move further and on the same concept now this is a picture those who know uh, mammals behavior or the cat behavior can make out what is going on but i have minimized the information minimal information is there i am not making it too obvious that are ye to dusra cheetah hai isn't it it's just another picture of cheetah same concept it was a backlight i just did you now you can guess it what it is doing it is a spray marking on a tree that we had a nice glowing effect and then just same concept which i just shown you another picture now i just kept because it was a vertical picture now in the la the picture on the left is the linuses and the cub is just uh, interacting with the mother and there's lots of grass blades around the uh, the affection between mother and son is been shown here and the picture is the left is the same picture i just convert into the black and white and i just kept the information the message which i wanted to show that there is interaction between mother and a cub and not that obvious little creative but the concept of doing a backlight was there so you able to do it if you are not have done this no again there was no money in guessing this <laughs> uh this is a linus as an two cups again minimum information the same the backlight is photograph itself is a backlight so it is possible to convert a beautiful picture i like this picture among the series which i made in last 3 4 years uh, a, a a clear interaction between a leopard and a mother and the message is she is nuzzling him a uh, young cub because the vehicle was and she, the cub was little nervous so he is just a uh, kissing kind of thing and simple photograph no distraction a viewer can easily relate that what is going on there in this frame a cheeta mother is interacting with his cub got it so basically the idea is we have to first do experiment with lighting try to create something and then we come back home we try to do some experiment in post processing also because see in digital era post processing part and parcel of the photography if somebody is not doing it this means he doesn't know it let me put it very simple somebody doesn't use flashes it means he doesn't know how to use flash let me very blunt people say that this is not good that is post processing agar aapko aata hai to aap kariye aapko nahi aata to you will not use. so that is the haina nobody want to see haina very often even not photograph much but when you do little creative way the haina can be look little bit little bit interesting people might want to put it in the wall as a part of a series or something like that so this is the main line something i just shown you in the backlight when it was a colored light by seeing it you can make out that this is a, this is a line isn't it again nothing uh, this is the concept of you shoot against the light and because the, when the morning sun rises above the hairy horizon it is stronger compared to the evening sun when it is set and the morning sun when you if you try to put it into the frame it will spoil the overall exposure of the frame it will make the shadows too dark or no so it is good to avoid the sun and just shoot into the ground 
and keep ground as your background and use that strong sunlight to get this kind of uh, nice important uh, uh, effect on your subject and which can be interesting to the viewer viewer might find a uh, something new you will be offering on social media or to your printer or to your and uh, a publisher so that they also feel something new dekho kya hai friend if you do a regular stuff obvious thing it will get a obvious response abhi now the ipl started i came few days back from forest and if you see 5 6 year back 3 year back just forget 5 6 there is to be two standard camera one one on the on the uh, screen wherever the bowler is bowling now today if you see the ipl there will be a cable camera which is giving a top view and i even i've seen a buggy which is moving on the boundary to give you the ground level so the perspective and the way you show the wildlife is has to be keep evolving many questions will come sir uh, keep asking ki kya karna chahiye how to grow as a photographer see first of don't do obvious thing obvious subject obviously because if you do the same thing same way the bird on a twig or a na subject walking a tight frame something you will get a obvious response take a risk experiment something if it will work it's good if it doesn't work you learn and then you experiment something more and that's how things will move so after the backlight sun is coming you know sort of strong ho gaya then the obvious the next next thing we will do will be the we will be the side lighting and again the side lighting is good instead of getting a full uh, front light side light is something okay again some examples of backlight see the backlight as the same concept what i told you uh, uh, the gecko example i have shown you now as a nature photographer you we should know that how the natural elements re- react now i have a set in my mind in 2012 in agumbe that droplets will glow if the light is falling backlight falling on to them the same concept is here the migration is crossing the river i am using the backlight and you can feel the energy you can feel the drama is action is going on the water is splashing and the water is glowing isn't it this is the colored picture again the water is splashing water is growing so backlight can really create something interesting in your photographs so now we move into the side lighting side lighting again the sub- light should be coming from a either left or right depend upon where your subject is there and uh, i'm i have to run up fast so uh, accordingly we have to uh, we will see the side lighting the what side lighting do normally we know as a photographer the front light will make your image look flat and the side light will create some shadow uh, on the other side where the light source is not there so the you will get some we will what we want to achieve is a, like you know a varied and a stark contrast in the tone of the subject and the shine on one side of the light falls adding a dramatic effect on the overall shot so normally a good to do a portraits a close up portraits if you do how we do in a studio light have you seen the satish's lighting when he was introduced light was coming from one side not a flat light how it's falling on me now so the direction of light really makes your subject look 3d kind of thing now the cheetah the leopard is just came out of his feeding and the light was falling from the right hand side you can even though it's a flat image you can see the depth of the depth, depth in the leopard body because the light side lighting creating shadow and the light and the is good one light is lit good for portraits there is there will be a one stop difference between a lit side and the lot non lit side good for portrait even this kind of photographs uh, side lit photographs looks good in black and white you will have some no it will be like little more contrast in the picture so it will be interesting if we do a portrait side lighting compared to flat uh, front lighting same uh, light is falling see in the portrait you see the one light is lit by the, the there's a shadow on this side how the studio effect we can create with the two light system one the main light and the fill light in the nature there is a lot of reflection coming from the ground and all that so it is a good if you use the side light and try to create nice portrait interesting portrait this is one of the rare sighting we had last year sita mother with seven cups never in the history of masai mara been seven cups has been reported 
six and unfortunately i think till now two are survived i'm not sure latest news so again the male is uh, this uh, female is walking and a beautiful light is falling from the one side and the one light eye is beautifully grown so they looks good in black and white you can create a nice contrast between the subject uh, both side of the face so this is the another thing which you can try side lighting and by the time you finish this thing it will be around uh, 9:30 10 we take a breakfast break after 3 3 hour good session and that is where normally my photography stops but because we if you are going to migration time and suppose there is a river crossing or something but again now the time will start creating where you start using a different perspective so after uh, 10 10:30 because in equator or in the uh, close to equator the sun become very strong uh, very soon by 10 10:30 it will be really hot so normally i will if i have a 7200 100 400 because i have a, a polarized filter so it is time to put a polarized filter you can cut a uh, edge uh, and your sky will now the sky that warm has been disappeared and now it will start becoming blue so you can add more blue uh, to your sky so it is time to work on the front light uh, and i use flash also now this photograph which i am showing there is a herd was moving there and because you know when the light is falling from the top the shadow start creating under the eye under the under bellies and all that so if you use a external flash and there is something called batter beamer i don't know many people must be knowing or snoot kind of thing which can make your light reach little further and uh, so that light can reach little far and that's how i wanted to show this uh, females body texture na no? skin texture so i just put a light there and uh, you can see and then this uh, uh, leopard who had just made a uh, uh, raided the warthog dan and he had got one uh, baby and he just brought under a bush and he was feeding it was he was con- con- totally into the shed so putting a light can really able to get the detail so it is time where you use the flash into bright day time as a flash to reduce the shadows now obviously uh, our flash will not f- go very far but as i told by using a, a better beamer is a uh, like a blind kind of thing which uh, let your light travel straight not far and then there will be a you know, some magnifying glass they call it lens in front of here uh, very reasonably priced or you just can make a homemade snoot kind of thing or magmot snoot kind of thing which will let your light reach further than what you otherwise it will possible so you can use as a fill flash in a day time with a good light just to get rid of the excessive shadows and that's how uh, and you can use a polarized filter if the subject is in open to reduce the haze and that kind of thing now uh, another concept which i use when i am in field that think wide and create wide angle perspective see the uh, places even in indian parks uh, many animals who used to see vehicle safari vehicle regularly are na quite comfortable safari vehicle safari vehicle in africa because i think the uh, safari has been going on from ages so animals are quite comfortable and there is no poaching as such for the big cats on no that much human pressure inside the park so they are quite comfortable so if we can follow the basic Uh, what i call uh, etiquettes of nature photography how to approach a mature way of approaching like slow study you know or let the subject come to you something like that then you really can create a uh, wider perspectives with with be into the vehicle not like you have to i do lot of camera trapping i'll do lot of remote so when i posted this picture people thought that i must have used a remote control buggy or something like that uh, but such things uh, this is a, one of the iconic elephant called craig and it has a partner which passed away last month uh, two months back i think that team and we were after this uh, elephant uh, these are these are male which is the biggest us and there is a there is a particular ranger who will be following them day in, day in and day out like they know that their behavior how they are reacting where they are how their mood is there so 
we approached with the ranger sitting in the front with our guide and driver and we were just waiting for subject to come there's two way of approaching the wildlife either let the subject come to you and or either way you approach the subject both is doable so in this case the subject is let because we know what he is feeding and where he will be walking so you go there be a part of his ecosystem wait there if you have to have patience to create such kind of photograph photograph this is not hurry hurry job that aapko ye bhi karna hai you have to shoot this also that also you know that if you can crack one or two good shots of such this may this this such a mighty giant no it is is done kind of thing so you have to have a patience like minded people very quietly sitting and patiently waiting subject time it not necessary you have to shoot at 16 mm and full frame i am talking even 25 to 50 mm but the main important is getting low getting that angle where you are looking up and the beautiful sky in the background is coming into the frame so that is important is not that subject has to be real and i just show you that how if you are have it you know you know the wildlife uh, behavior or you have the right person you can really approach how closely to this uh, and this photograph is done by see this is the tusk and b3 photographers in this thing we were ready with wide angle much before the subject came we already have kept our lens we were holding our lenses in the hand and we were ready we were ready with the that we only have to create a wide angle aisa nahi ki aap you are shooting with 70 200 or 100 400 or 500 lens suddenly you keeping that and making noise no we parked there we are waiting for 10 15 minutes with the wide angle 24 17 16 35 kind of stuff and nowadays we have a uh, this new cameras have a lcd screen can be na we can it can come out you can really see the composition and with your experience before going to tour uh, we do lot of home experiment that we experiment with car and all that bala bala which i will talk when we go on to the tour and then you know what is where to start what will work how to focus and see the same elephant the same thing you can really can approach them and in fact they approach you you is not and you can really create nice perspective if you have a thought process already knowing that what you have what you want to create similarly see that male was walking in the early morning in the marsh area and uh, it was it 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 is walking on a straight track and we just park it and waited him to come and again the concept is simple Uh, the one guy is shooting with 70 200 he was not prepared or uh, came with it now you can get the you can get the idea that how much difference will be there this guy is having a monopod around 1 and 1/2 feet going down and this is having a 70 200 around 2 feet difference between the angle of view subject is just 10 feet away from you and the perspective will be totally different isn't it now in this photograph you can feel the endless plane what we told the sky and the what we told about that mara sky will be like like and then acacia tree subject is regular we could have shoot with 70 200 also we could have taken a nice portrait also but simple implementation knowing that what you want to create you can make little bit different images same this is uh, we were knowing that this male is is a partner of the same guy they he is walking on a track so instead of we blocking we just park on the side of the track and we waited let him pass in front of us we were ready with our gear and that is how this nice uh, background the sun rays are falling onto the ground such kind of images can be created i just again this is a mating pair and uh, you can see the energy you can feel that this is i have done uh, sitting in the front uh, next to the driver and you can feel the energy of uh, they just finished the mate and uh, waiting and they were separating the aggr- aggression and you can again get a nice wide angle perspective sitting into the vehicle just now that's what i am saying another concept where you can approach the subject if subject is standing is cooperative it depend upon subject see like we human different subject will react differently some subject as soon as you try to approach they will start walking they don't follow because if they don't stop they will not stop they will keep going so now this i just use fish eye 
and this vehicle is mine vehicle where i'm shooting and we that is approach what i call circular spiral circular where you you never head towards the vehicle you take a circle and then you keep reducing stop then you keep reducing your circumference and then till you reach and subject know that you are approaching but you never approaching them directly so that is how you can really approach subject if you have a proper way of so technique means it is not that you have to know your gear only technique means as a wildlife photographer that's why i keep saying you should know learn more about behavior of your subject also you should know how your subject is reacting how your subject behaves and with a proper guide proper ranger proper uh, matlab supporting staff that's how you can really approach wildlife in a right way and you can create some compelling image again the lion was sitting on a little higher mount uh, crowd and we were on the ground he made a uh, wild beast skill so they were guarding it he is watching the vulture who is flying on the top and just keeping a watch on to it and this is how you can really create uh, images again just shooting from the low is not a wide angle i think it is shot with 7200 but then you can feel the landscape you can make the landscape as a part of your subject i i i very much uh, uh, try to create images where when you see the image you at least get a feel of the place that what kind of habitat subject is that is the main reason why i am doing lot of camera trap because overall we pay too much attention to the subject overall we means me as a wildlife photographer also and the general public also the same and same emotions or same what i mean to say feel we don't have for the habitat so habitat uh, being a part of frame is also this is again not a very close shot like what a wide angle shot should be uh, that line was supposed to cross a river and was coming up we were waiting here and i was expecting that it will go across the frame and but our position was that that we can feel the beautiful sky in the background we were prepared but he chose to uh, take the other way but still i like the frame that the vastness is there the vastness of the sky the vastness of the plain uh, is there and then a subject so that's how you can create interesting images uh, now i come to the another interesting concept which uh what i called is creating sense of uh motion in a still photography now still photography by nature is a still photography isn't it so to get a feel of a movement in a still photography is a challenging but if we do it it is rewarding like see this picture and we can feel that there is some movement is there the cubs are running they have a energy